and I am here today with a book haul. Well, specifically with part one of a book haul. We'll get into that. Do the screen. First of all, thank you to all of you guys who sent Get Well messages. As you can probably hear from my voice, I'm still a little bit sick, but I am getting there. Things are improving and I am pleased to announce that I no longer feel like a human slug. Well, for the most part. There's that brief moment in the morning where you take stock of all of your body parts and are a bit concerned, but apart from that, we're good. I was going to sit down today and film my tops and bottoms for October because October is far far in the distance now, but instead I've decided y'all are getting a book haul because I want to do something that's fun and this is fun. And as is tradition on my channel, this is going to be a two-parter. In the first part we are going to have thrillers, true crime and a little bit of horror I think. And in the second part we are going to have basically everything else. There's like urban fantasy and memoir and Harry Potter. I have rambled long enough. Let us get into the bookie books. The so last month I read The Sleep of Reason by David James Smith. I've talked about this book quite a lot at this point but I really cannot recommend it more highly. This is a non-fiction true crime book about the James Bulger case. James Bulger, in case you're not familiar, was a two-year-old who was abducted by two ten-year-old boys in the 90s from under his mother's nose in a shopping centre. He was then taken on a very long walk where he was tortured and killed in horrible circumstances and the two ten-year-old boys were later tried and convicted of murder. So the reason I bring this one up again is because it is actually the 25th anniversary of James Bulger's death and there has been a lot in the UK media about it recently and because I have picked this one up I decided I would go ahead and pick up Denise Fergus's book who is James Bulger's mother and so I have got I let him go. So this one is a memoir by Denise, a little bit about how she came to be James's mother in the first place and then about the horrible events and what she's done with her life afterwards because she has set up a charity called For James and she does a lot of campaigning and she has gone on to have other children and a happy marriage. The next one that I have is The Cry by Helen Fitzgerald. You might recognise the title of this one because it is a domestic thriller which was recently adapted and it aired on the BBC starring the wonderful Jenna Coleman who just mm, she was so good it's a four-part series I would highly recommend it but I'm warning you it's pretty bleak so this domestic thriller is about Joanna and her husband they have traveled back to Australia where Joanna's husband comes from with their very very young son to introduce him to his older sister and his grandparents they are parked by the side of the road and he goes missing. He is gone, poof, there is no sign of who took him and a major police investigation ensues in this fairly small town in Australia where a lot of people have a lot of links to each other. So it does the small town thing, it does the Australia thing and it also does that marvellous thing where the story is weaved in various different timelines and as things unfold we get a greater understanding of what is really going on. I cannot wait to read this book. If it is half as good as the TV show, I will be a very happy Leanne. I have another true crime one now, and this is Beyond Evil, Inside the Twisted Mind of Ian Huntley by Nathan Yates. Now this one is about the murders of Holly and Jessica Chapman, which was another huge case in the UK. The way that the girls were abducted and exactly what happened was hugely shocking. I don't know enough about it to give you a proper synopsis of the case and I want to keep it that way because I want to find out things as I read the book. I am a little bit put off, just a little bit put off with the provocative title and you know the subtitle but I get why the author has done that and why the publisher has done that and I'm still very interested to read it. Nathan Yates is an investigative journalist who was around at the time of the murders and he actually interviewed Ian Huntley and his former girlfriend Maxine Carr so he did have fairly good access to the case. The next one that I have is The Grave Tender by Eliza Maxwell and this is kind of a small town thriller. It's another one of Leanne's favourite tropes of coming back to your small town 
after you have escaped. So Hadley Dixon grew up in East Texas and can I just say that's another one of those locations that I love in thriller and mystery books, just I don't know what it is but Texas is phenomenal. There are so many different levels of culture in Texas and I just, mm, I love it. Anyway, Hadley Dixon had a very traumatic childhood and this one is giving me hints of The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter because it talks about how an event in Hadley's childhood changed the entire town's opinion about her family. It was terrible, it was traumatic, it tore everything apart and now years and years later a widowed and pregnant Hadley has come back to the small town but unfortunately upon her return there is another case that happens where a young child has been abducted and fingers are pointed at her uncle. Back to True Crime again in a book that I am very excited about. This one is published by a small press who approached me directly about getting a copy for review and I am so glad that they did because it sounds super interesting. This one is The Girls Are Gone and I'm gonna have to read the author's names off the cover which I hate doing but for some reason they won't stick in my head. So it's by Michael Broadcorb and Alison Mann. So in 2013 Samantha and Gianna Rocky disappeared they were teenage sisters who just seemed to vanish from the face of the earth. Before the disappearance, these two girls, who are two of five of this couple's children, were being pushed from pillar to post through a really, really messy divorce. And following their disappearance, it appears that their father is doing everything that he possibly can to find his daughters. Media appeals, working with the police, the whole lot. Whereas their mother, it's not that fussed. She takes herself on holiday while they're missing and then later on when the press coverage of it is at its highest she disappears. So this one holds itself up to be one of those books that is about what you see on the surface versus what's actually going on underneath the case and hopefully it's also about the influence of the media because during big high profile cases the media can have such an effect on the outcome. The other interesting thing about this one is that Michael is actually a journalist, an investigative journalist, who covered the case as it was happening and has been very heavily involved in it. But Alison Mann is actually an attorney and she is representing the father in the case, which makes me wonder whether the book itself will be a little bit biased towards the father but I don't know anything about this case. I haven't heard anything about it before so another one I am going into with an entirely open mind. The next one just oh, the premise of it makes me so happy. Two of my favourite books in the entire world world in the entire world are we need to talk about Kevin and also reasons she goes to the wood. Lionel Shriver and Deborah K Davies are very different authors but they both bring a really interesting spin on the idea of dangerous children, children who despite a good upbringing do not necessarily have the moral sensibilities that other children do. So this one is Baby Teeth or Bad Apple, depending on whether you're in the US or the UK, but we're gonna stick with Baby Teeth because the cover is nicer and yes, I am incredibly shallow, let's move on. So in this book, Zoji Stage investigates the relationship between Suzette and her seven-year-old daughter, Hannah. Hannah, in Suzette's presence, has never spoken a single word. She is constantly in trouble at school, she's terrible with babysitters, babysitters just refuse to be around her, but her father thinks that she's an absolute angel and she just needs help. One night Suzette gets extremely frustrated with the lack of communication from Hannah and while they are alone she asks her a question and Hannah's response is horrifying and Suzette starts to wonder if Hannah was just deliberately making a scary joke or whether she is actually in danger from her own child. Give it to me now. 
right now. So the last one that I have before I move on to my properly horror books is Saving April by Sarah A. Denzel. This one is also about a Hannah. Hannah Abbott in this case lives in rural Yorkshire. She has one next door neighbour Elizabeth that she speaks to and apart from that she is a complete recluse. She does not leave her house. So Hannah has a very restrained life. She likes order and she likes the way that it is. And then some neighbours, some new neighbours, they mess and family move in across the way and very slowly they pull Hannah into their twisted web and then Hannah finds herself cast in a role she never expected. Is she an unhinged nosy neighbour or is she a woman trying to save a child to save April? I want to know. Do you want to know? I want to know. Now Pan Mac were very generous to me this month and I have two books to show you that I am particularly excited for. The first one might come as a bit of a surprise to you guys because it is by an author that I have never ever considered talking about on the channel before and that is Peter James. So for the record I have tried Peter James's Roy Grace series and I don't like it. It's a crime series about a pretty battered by life detective and it is just full of every trope that has ever been written. And it's not to say that they are badly written but they are very formulaic and they're not for me. But I had heard the description of this book before, independently, before Pan Mac contacted me about it and I have to say that the description is very much up Leanne's alley. It's a haunted house story in case you couldn't tell. So this is the house on Cold Hill and it's definitely giving me vibes of The Upstairs Room by Kate Murray Brown which is a cynical ghost story that I read really recently and absolutely love. So this one is about a very young family when they move all the way to rural Sussex. It's a dream move. They are in love with this Georgian mansion, the house on Cold Hill, and they are just dying to get in there and start renovations. It's going to cost them a lot of money, but they're going to try their best. However, within a few days, it becomes very clear that their 12-year-old daughter Jade has discovered that they are not alone in the house. They are not the only family that live in the house. Other things that live in the house. It's a ghost story, okay? And because it's me, you know, I will give you an honest opinion about whether I think that this is very tropey or not. The next one is a straight up creepy forest story and I am so incredibly there for it. This is The Ritual by Adam Neville. This is of course the movie tie-in cover and I could not be more here for this book. You will probably remember that I recently hauled another Adam Neville book which was Apartment 16 which is another haunted house story. Of course it is. But this one is completely different. It's all of Leanne's other horror buttons. It's her outside, what lives outside house's horror buttons. It's her inability to control the wilderness horror buttons. I I'm looking forward to it so much, can you tell? Oh my god. This is about four old university friends. They haven't seen each other in person for a very long time, but they have kept in touch and they finally decide that they're going to take the trip that they keep talking about. Does anybody else have friends like that? Because I certainly do. In their case, the trip that they decide to take is to the Arctic Circle. I don't know, just go with it. So they have gone to the Scandinavian wilderness and they are backpacking. And the route that they take turns out not to be as easy as they thought it was going to be and the other thing that's not as easy is conversation because it turns out that after all these years they don't actually have that much in common anymore and slash kind of don't like each other anymore and just find each other really annoying and so they start getting ratty and they start taking shortcuts and eventually they get lost in the forest being as this is a horror book we know that this is a bad thing or a good thing, depending on which side of the horror event you're on. Lost and hungry and increasingly desperate, they find a cabin in the woods and decide to go into it. Because of course they did. And then what happens is entirely their own faults and I'm looking forward to it. And finally, my favourite month of the year after October is coming up very soon. It's December, of course. It's Christmas. Yes, I will probably be singing Christmas songs the same way that I was singing Halloween songs 
Sorry in advance. <coughs> that was the universe trying to tell me not to sing. Anyway, so I have never read any horror stories about Christmas. I have of course read many horror stories about winter, but never any that actually have focused on Christmas. I have remedied that this year. This is Hark the Herald Angels Scream and it is tales of collected horror all about Christmas Day. I wouldn't usually read you quotes from the covers of novels because I usually hate the fact that they're there but Grady Hendrix who wrote My Best Friend's Exorcism and also Horror Store which of course is the Ikea horror novel we all know about that one. He wrote a quote on the back of this one and I kind of I, I'm just gonna read it I'm gonna read it. Beneath the tree the presents lie a knife that vanishes, a crash that lives, a house in London luring lonely tourists, each one wrapped with care, each one dripping venom. Every tale is unexpected and unsettling, leaving you enveloped in a shroud of Christmas dread. I feel like Christmas dread is definitely for the people who don't like Christmas and it is also for the people who have relatives around on Christmas. Am I right? I know I'm right. I'm not picking them up again because I'm still sick and I don't want to drop them all over the floor. But that is all of the books for part one. I hope you have enjoyed all of the true crime and murdery stuff and horrory stuff and that you're as excited about it as I am. If you are, please tell me in the comments and we can chat about it. Also tell me about any other true crime or thriller or horror recommendations that you've read recently because you know that I like to buy books and I, I will purchase that immediately. <coughs> I was going to say let's hope we get better but then my throat went no. <laughs> Let's hope I am better for part two, which will be coming very, very soon. And let's let's just hope for December. Let's hope for Christmas month really soon. Shall we? Yes. I will speak to you guys soon. Bye! I don't want to put any of these books away.